Whiskey Gaming and this is my late review of Deadlight the Director's Cut. I played it on the Xbox One, it's also available on the PS4, and the original version is available on the 360 and PS3. I think it's also available on Steam, but it's been a while. Since most of the games that were supposed to be coming out this month, and even next month, really aren't coming out until later, I'm clearing out my queue a bit. So let's get into it. Deadlight is another zombie game and you play as Randall this time. And one unique thing about it is that it takes place in 1986. And the only other unique thing about the story of this game is that instead of calling them zombies or walkers or something along those lines, they call them shadows. But make no mistake, they are absolutely 100% zombies, and this game really just follows every stereotype of any zombie movie or video game ever made. You've got a dude looking for his missing family, you have a group of friends, you have your militaristic nut jobs, and of course, zombies. You've got a story that doesn't take any new twists or turns and wraps up as stereotypically as it possibly could. It's really unfortunate that the unique things are very superficial in this game, and it's, you know, it's a game with a story that happens to just kind of exist. That's all I can really say about the story. I really wish there was something else I could add. As for the audio, the music and sound effects in this game, they're... Not amazing, but they are pretty good, and I do like the atmosphere, and I like the sound effects and what they add to it. Unfortunately, the voice acting ranges in quality, and I mean greatly ranges in quality from character to character, whether they're minor or major. At best, it's good or passable. At worst, it's terrible. Just straight up terrible voice acting. And unfortunately, it's not aided by a good script. The script is absolute garbage. It, it's horrible. So it's kind of not surprising that the voiceover work is not good either. But I could survive the voiceover work if the script wasn't so horrid. Too many of the lines are just absolute shit. Now, as for the gameplay and whatnot, it is a side-scroller, mostly platforming. There is a bit of combat, but... The combat in the game is not phenomenal. You're really meant to run more than fight in pretty much every situation. There is some pretty simple puzzle solving and a good amount of collectibles. There's another game mode you can unlock at the end, but it is a very straightforward and pretty short game. Let's get into the controls, and unfortunately this is the place where the game doesn't so much tumble down a hill, it plummets off a cliff. The first major problem I have with this game is that it's a very fast-paced game. You are meant to be running, you are meant to be trying to escape the zombies as fast as you can, and even the military nut jobs as fast as you can. So when the controls don't react as quickly as you need them to, when it's at times a somewhat awkward scheme, and the game itself just doesn't react fast enough to how it has you moving, that's a problem. But the response of the controls is also a very large problem. There were plenty of times where I was trying to run through an area that was collapsing or being chased by a horde, and the controls just wouldn't do what I was trying to get them to do. That happened to me in combat as well, where I was trying to aim, and it just wouldn't allow me to aim, not fast enough anyways, or reload fast enough. The buttons just wouldn't do it. They would eventually do it, but I was already dying by the time they started working. The other way that I will say the game is too slow for what it's having you do is there were times where I needed to sprint through areas and you reached the end of the screen and you were sprinting through something into the new area and it just wouldn't present that new area fast enough, not as fast as you need it to. So you would kind of have to do a live, die, repeat thing where you die, you sprint into that area and you already know what's there, which isn't entirely a control thing. I just don't know where to put it. So I'm slapping it in here with the controls and it does apply to the non-responsiveness of the controls because well you need to know in advance so that you can press the buttons in advance because the controls may or may not respond as quickly as you need them to. I also had a couple of weird things happen where like I was hopping over a fence and this happened multiple times but he would bounce back and forth back and forth back and forth over the top of the fence and it was like it was reading something I was doing with the controls that I absolutely was not doing. 
Then there was also the time where it decided that it just didn't want to listen to any of my controls except for the Y button and my menus buttons. So I could taunt these zombies to try and get them to chase me, and I could hang off of the ledge, and that was about it. So I had to pause the game and reload a checkpoint. So you can probably guess I don't love the controls, since that's like 90% of my rant this time around. Okay, not really 90%, but it's taking up a lot more than the controls normally do. Let's get into the graphics, which I will say... I like one thing that this game does, and it tells the story in like a comic book way when it's doing cutscenes. It's got that cool hand-drawn style, very like pen and ink on blank canvas mostly. I gotta say, I like the way that looked. As for the gameplay itself, it's a 2D game, so it looks fine for the most part. I will say it's a little too dark for its own good, and they didn't do a great job of defining what is usable essentially. And I don't mean items wise, I mean platforms. There were times where I didn't see that something was a platform because, well, I mean, you couldn't really tell until you fell to your death before deciding you needed to leap to it. They also didn't always do a good job letting you know that that was a ledge you could climb on, etc. So that was one thing that definitely also didn't do a great job. I think overall the visuals are fine in this game. I actually like the way they look. I thought this could be a cool looking game. But the world itself needed to be more visible so that you could play it. So to wrap this up, I'm sure if you've been paying any attention at all, you will realize that I have a multitude of issues with this game, so I'm not going to spend too much time here. It's a $15 game, and it's not worth that. I have played $5 and $10 games that I would say are definitely better experiences. So don't waste your time. I'm not recommending this. It is a skip. Just skip it. Okay, so in the comments down below, why don't you tell me, are you getting kind of tired of the whole zombie thing? I mean, I love zombies and all, but man, we need a break, I think. And as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. And if you like what I'm doing in general, share, subscribe. Have a good one.